Well, Shabbat Shalom. I just want to welcome everyone to the Sabbath Day Conference Call. This is Barbara. I'm serving as your host today. And also Brother Martin said he would help me with the reading. And we just want to welcome all our family and friends that are here today by the phone or Internet. Or maybe you're listening to the recording. We just want to welcome you today, too. And we invite everyone to go to our website, LunarSabbathDay.com. It's a great source of information about the Creator Sabbath, the Lunar Sabbath, the calendar in the heaven. There's articles there, videos there. And uh, on the events page, you can scroll down to the bottom and see our phone numbers and links and join us for fellowship. Uh, Many of us feel alone where we are in our state or country, but we can fellowship together on the phone and internet on Sabbath and new moon days and we really appreciate that. Now today our discussion on the original timekeeping system is why Rome changed the Passover to Easter. Uh, This is uh, the week before Passover uh, at the time this recording is being made and then the following after uh, Passover will be April 6th And uh, I think that Easter is April uh, 12. It's on this calendar, actually. And so uh, I just wanted to bring out why the world is keeping Easter instead of Passover. So did you know that Rome changed that calendar? So uh, why did they change it and fix it to the moon? Actually, they fix it to the vernal equinox and the first, uh, well, we'll be reading more about that. But the Jewish festival, which was outlawed in favor of Easter, was Passover. So, uh, and of course, uh, I'll leave a link below about uh, the paganism of Easter. But we all know most of that. We've studied it. That's why we're here today. We've learned about all these things. Uh, Modern Easter has no basis on the pure religion of heaven, and all its traditions are pagan, like rabbits and Easter eggs, and hot cross buns and cakes, and 40 days weeping for Tammuz, sunrise services, and all that we know already. So Easter is much more than a pagan imposter. Pretending to be Christian and lurking behind the pretty facade of Easter is a cover-up for the greatest fraud of all time, a calendar change which hides the true day of the resurrection and the true seventh-day Sabbath. Uh, And prior to Constantine changing the pagan calendar to Easter, the Romans had a festival in the spring at the time of the spring equinox, and it was for their god Sibyl and Attis. And uh, that would be the same as the Babylonian gods, uh, Ishtar and Nimrod. So that's what the spring equinox was about. That's what the festival was about. It wasn't about Jesus at all or Yeshua. And there's the spring equinox. Okay. Okay. So um, how did Easter get into the church? Uh, Go ahead and read a little bit, Brother Martin. After Constantine decided to Christianize the, to Christianize the <laughs> Easter was changed to represent Jesus, Yeshua. But at its roots, Easter, which is how you pronounce Ishtar, is all about celebrating brutality and sex. sex. Okay, so the great dispute known as the Easter controversy began in the 2nd century A.D. This is when Roman bishops and emperors sought to unite their entire kingdom empire, the eastern Aesthetics, Israel, and surrounding areas with the western Roman churches, Italy, and surrounding areas for the purpose of celebrating Easter, the replacement of Passover. On the exact same day of the week, this plan was not fully successful until Emperor Constantine at the Council of Nicaea, A.D. 321-325, instituted the new Seventh-day Planetary Week. The sun was given the highest honor as the first day of the new cycling week was called Dias Solus, Day of the Sun, and the seventh day was called Dias Saturnus, Day of Saturn. This new week was cut from the cloth of their former eight-day cycling week 
and therefore had no rhythmic connection to the week of creation, no matter how difficult it may be to give up this notion. Oh, and then over here is a, the picture of Saturn used to being the first day of the week, and Sunday was the second, but that was all changed. Okay, so the Roman Church created the observance of Easter. Uh, the victor, Bishop of Rome, proclaimed that Easter must be celebrated on the first Sunday after the full moon following the vernal equinox of the Roman calendar model. So uh, this was done to ensure that Easter would never fall on the biblical Passover. And this effectively caused Christmas to be out of sync with the heavenly cycles on which Christians, sorry, please forgive me. Uh, this caused Christians to be out of sync with the heavenly cycles on which the Father based his lunar feast calendar. So um, I found this stuff on the internet, this giant egg that Rome does for Easter and many other things done for Easter for almost 1,700 years, or more than 1,700 years. So the bishops of Rome had Emperor Constantine make a law forbidding the holy feast days. And so we have already read 325 AD at the Council of Nicaea. He established the date of Easter as the first Sunday after the full moon following the March equinox. But the, the the churches in Asia, they objected to this, and they was not they were not willing to compromise with the uh, this uh, calendar that was uh, changing the holy days to um, something on a Roman calendar. So they suffered persecution for it too. So uh, Passover versus Easter. Attention appeared deceptively, uh, deceptively simple. You know, simple, simple fast you're breaking up, Easter. Brother Martin. You're breaking up a little bit. Um, uh, hey, Brother Stephen, would you pick up reading then? We'll see if your voice, uh, Brother Martin, you were breaking up. Yeah, I'll read it. The point of contention appeared deceptively simple. Passover versus Easter. The issue at stake, however, were immense. The only way to determine when Passover occurs is to use the biblical loony solar calendar. Um, calendar fraud, page 49. And these contentions... Yes, had, and I want to mention, I have all these links below, so the reader, Stephen or Martin, will have Stephen reading now. You don't have to read all the references because I do have them all below. So that will save okay. you the pain of going through it all. So thank you. These contentions had aggregated the churches of Asia since the time of the Roman bishop Victor, who had persecuted the churches of Asia for following the 14th day heresy, as they called it, in reference to the Passover. The future Easter observance was to be rendered independent of Jewish calculations. Okay. Okay, so the Jewish festival Passover was outlawed in favor of Easter. And I never thought about it being called the 14-day heresy. Um, boy, they were really against uh, the calendar and the heavens. Go ahead, brother. All the early Christians kept the Feast of Yahweh as outlined in Leviticus 23. Paganized Christians still wanted you, to celebrate Easter while apostate Christians still clinging to a pure faith observed Passover. Since the 2nd century AD, there had been a divergence of opinion about the date for celebrating the Paschal Easter anniversary of the Lord's Passion, Death, Burial, and Resurrection. The most ancient practice appears to have been to observe the 14th, the Passover date, 15th and 16th days of the lunar month regarding of the day of the Julian week. These dates might fall on from year to year. The bishops of Rome desirous of enhancing the observance of Sunday as a church festival, ruled that the annual celebration should always be held on the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. 
following the 14th day of the lunar month. This controversy lasted almost two centuries until the Empire Constantine intervened in behalf of the Roman bishops and outlawed the other group. Okay, so in AD 325, at the First Council of Nicaea, Emperor Constantine wrote his law, and here it is. It appeared an unworthy thing that in the celebration of this most highly feast, we should follow the practice of the Jews, who have been in previously defiled their hands with the enormous sin and are therefore diversely affected with the blindness of soul. Let us have then have nothing in common with the detestable Jewish crowd, for we have received from our Savior a different way. In other words, he condemned the holy feast days by saying that they were Jewish. What he didn't say is that the Messiah from the tribe of Judah is one of who is fulfilling the feast days. So Constantine condemned the Jews, and uh, it's not just the Jews. These are the Father's Feast, and remember the ten lost tribes that are scattered all over the nation. So it's all of Yah's people of Israel, and uh, that is us because we're keeping the feast days too. So he condemned anything that was said to be Jewish. And uh, as the years passed and the first Christians died, paganism began to corrupt the once pure faith. The church in Rome, greedy for ever greater power, sought ways to increase her influence. To consolidate the pagans to nominal Christianity, Rome, pursuing its usual policy, took measures to get the Christian and pagan festivals amalgamated, and by a complicated but skillful adjustment of the calendar, it was found no difficult matter in the general to get the paganism and Christianity now far sunk in idolatry in this as so many other things to shake hands. This change of the calendar regarding Easter was attended with a momentous consequences. It brought into the church the grossest corruption and rankest superstition. Okay, so they, the Church of Rome got um, the paganism and Christianity to shake hands and become one and become partners. And you'll see a couple pictures on here. I've got Billy Graham shaking hands with the Pope and uh, another uh, Adventist uh, person, Beachy. Uh, shaking hands with the Pope. So um, we've come a long ways from uh, paganism shaking hands with Rome, but now we have Christianity shaking hands with Rome also. Uh, but okay, we'll go forward. Uh, this change of the calendar also changed the day of worship. And this is admitted by Roman Catholics who point to it as a sign of their authority. Sunday is purely a creation of the Catholic Church. They, the Protestants, deem it their duty to keep the Sunday holy. Why? Because the Catholic Church tells them to do so. They have no other reason. The author of Sunday Law is the Catholic Church. And those references are there. Um, they are quotes from the Catholic Church, their quarterly review and their ecclesiastical review. So I'll leave those links below. But those are quotes from the Catholic Church saying they can change Sunday, they can change the Jewish feast days, and we're going to read more. Um, yeah, here is the real significance of Easter Sunday. Easter, because Sunday is kept as a day of worship because of Easter Sunday. And it's claimed that the Savior was resurrected then on Easter Sunday. And consequently, it is assumed that the day before Easter Sunday is Saturday. And they assume that that is the Sabbath. We That's the church I grew up in. We always said, you know, Sabbath is the day he rested in the grave. And it's on Saturday because he rose on Sunday. But we didn't know about the Creator's calendar. And now we know that Passover is the 14th 
and he rested in the grave on the 15th of his calendar and, and raised on the 16th first fruit. One Catholic, bishop went from one, so Catholic far, oh, one Catholic bishop went so far as to state, it was the Catholic Church which made the law obligating us to keep Sunday holy. The Church made this law long before, I mean, long after the Bible was written. Hence it said it is not in the Bible. The Catholic Church abolished not only the Sabbath, but all other Jewish festivals. Yeah, so that is a good quote there. Um, they didn't just, this is a good one for my Adventist friends that I came out of the church. I have so many family and friends there that still don't keep the feast, but they use the quotes from the Catholic Church saying they abolished uh, the Sabbath, but they don't use these quotes that say they abolish all the Jewish festivals. So um, many have woke up and are keeping the feast now, but there's many, many more that still think it was done away with. So true or false. So the truth is Easter is a fraud. It's not the day on which the Savior rose from the grave, nor is Saturday the seventh-day Sabbath of the Bible. So it's like a a double fraud there and Easter is it has always been a pagan holiday celebrating fertility and all the pagan gods Ashtoreth and all those uh, seminaris they're all under the same name the same female god sorry I, I'm Jews today worship on Saturday rather than the biblical seventh-day Sabbath. However, Jewish scholars admit that the calendar in use for worship today is not the same as was used in Bible times. The new moon is still, and the Sabbath originally was, dependent upon the lunar cycle. The Jews point to the extreme persecution following the cancel of Narcia's decision to set aside the Jewish time calculation as the reason for why they no longer use the biblical calendar. Yeah, and I like this quote from the Universal Jewish Encyclopedia, page 410, and I think most of us know that by heart that have been attending, um, uh, learning about the Creator's calendar. The new moon is still, and the Sabbath originally was, dependent on the lunar cycle. So it's in all the Jewish encyclopedias and everything that um, the, the Sabbath was by the Creator's calendar in the heavens. So um, Jewish scholars understand that Christianity stepped free of its biblical roots when the pagan Easter was substituted for the true Passover. At the Council of Nicaea, the last thread was snapped which connected Christianity to its parent stock. The festival of Easter had up till now been celebrated for the most part at the same time as the Jewish Passover, and indeed upon the days calculated and fixed by the Sanhedrin in Judea for its celebration. But in, but in future, its observance was to be rendered all, altogether independent of the Jewish calendar. Emperor Constantine stated, for it was unbecoming beyond the measure that on this holiest of festivals we should follow the customs of the Jews. Henceforward let us have nothing in common with the odious people our Savior had shown us another path. It would indeed be absurd if the Jews were able to boast that we are not in a position to celebrate the Passover without the aid of their rules. So those were some more quotes from um, history there, Constantine and uh, history of the Jews. So how is Easter determined? I think most people know this, but maybe uh, you didn't know. It was by the vernal equinox, but we'll go ahead and read this. This was on um, Wikipedia or time date in the, on the Internet. I just pasted it on here, but this is for the whole world to read how they find Easter on the Sunday there to be celebrated by the 
all the churches in the world are doing it. Easter falls on the first Sunday after the full moon date based on mathematical calculation that falls on or after March 21st. If the full moon is on a Sunday, Easter is celebrated on the following Sunday. Although Easter is liturgically related to the beginning of spring in the northern hemisphere, March equinox, and the full moon, its day is not based on the actual astronomical date of either event. March 21st is the church date of the March equinox, regardless of the time zone, while the actual date of the equinox varies between March 19th and March 22nd, and the date depends on the time zone. The date of the Paschal full moon used to determine the date of Easter is based on mathematical approximations following a 19-year cycle called the Madonic cycle. Both dates may coincide with the dates of the astronomical events, but in some years they don't. Yeah, okay, thank you. So um, that's how it's determined. And um, if now I want to talk a little bit about the New World Calendar, just a little bit about how they're trying to fix the date of Easter. So they already fixed it way back there in Constantine in 300 A.D., but uh, the Roman Church is also talking about a New World Calendar and fixing the date of Easter. So uh, I'm just going to skim over this. You can uh, see it when you get the recording link or pause the screen. But um, in this meeting with Pope Francis, they wrote a letter to him uh, asking for him to consider making a renewed effort to unify, for a unified date for Easter. And then uh, in response in June, uh, Pope Francis said, we have come to an agreement for a common date on Easter. And then further down, the Pope is offering this initiative to change the date of Easter as a gift of unity with the other Christian churches, adding that a common date for Easter would encourage reconciliation between the Christian churches. And uh, then it goes on down here at the, say, at the bottom to say a fixed date for Easter. And uh, that he hoped it would happen within the next five to ten years. So maybe we're going to see that new world order calendar within the next five to ten years. He hoped it would happen. And uh, then he, Walby has suggested that Easter be fixed on either the second or third Sunday of April relative to the Gregorian calendar. This proposal remains to be approved, especially by Eastern churches, which currently determine Easter using the Julian calendar. So I found out there's still some churches that actually out in the Eastern area use Julian calendar and not Gregorian. But here's uh, what was on a CNA uh, interview. Uh, I'll go ahead, brother. Vatican City, June 19th to 2015, speaking to a global gathering of priests, Pope Francis signaled an openness to changing the date of Easter in the West so that all Christians around the world would celebrate the feast on the same day. The Pope on June 12th said, we have come to an agreement for a common date on Easter. His comments came in remarks to the world retreat of priests at the Basilica of St. John Lateran in Rome. The event drew priests from the five continents. The Pope joked that Christians could say to one another, When did Christ rise from the dead? My Christ rose today and yours next week. Adding that this disunity is a scandal. The Orthodox churches normally celebrate Easter a week after the Catholics. Some Orthodox leaders have also reflected on the dating of the Christian Holy Day in May. Coptic Orthodox Pope Tawardus II wrote to the papal Nicaea in Egypt suggesting a common date for Easter. 
So um, a lot of the Sunday keeping churches are on different dates for Easter. I guess I wasn't aware of that before. But if they, the world uh, enacts a new world calendar with the fixed date, they'll all be on the same Easter Sunday, which won't affect us because we're on the Father's calendar. But uh, here's the World Calendar Association. Uh, they continue to push for calendar reform, and really a lot of it is about fixing uh, the date for Easter. That's what. And over here you'll see an example of how it might be, and there will be a couple world days. There will be one in the middle there at June, after June, and one at the end of December, which are non-days. They are not a Wednesday. They're not a Friday. They're not a Sunday. They have no name. So that's really going to mess up the count for people in the churches that are looking for every Saturday to be Sabbath. Uh, having two days mixed in there that don't have a name, um, anyways, we'll go ahead and read, read this, um, what the Pope has made clear. The Pope has made it clear that he wants a fixed Easter permanently. Most people do not understand just what that entails. There are only three ways to fix Easter. Tie Easter to a specific date regardless of the day of the week. An example of this is a Christmas, December 25th which can fall on any day of the week. The Pope will not fix Easter this way because Easter Sunday is his main reason for changing the biblical Sabbath to the Lord's Day to honor the day on which he claims Christ arose from the dead. Two, tie Easter to a specific day regardless of the date. An example of this is Thanksgiving in United States, it falls on the last Thursday of every November. Okay. And here's the rest of the option. This is not an option because this is the way Easter is tied to the calendar now. It is already tied to a specific day because the date of Easter floats through the Gregorian calendar. Most people do not understand how it is calculated. Easter is tied to the vernal equinox, officially March 21st. Therefore, it always falls on the first Sunday after the first full moon on or after the vernal equinox. The first two methods of fixing Easter being exhausted leaves only one way. Change the entire calendar. The old proverb says, He who controls the calendar controls the world. Anciently, Computation of the calendar was the job of the priesthood. As the sign of the authority of the Catholic Church, Papist writers cite, the very act of changing the Sabbath into Sunday, which Protestants allow of, because they keeping Sunday, they acknowledge the church power to ordain feasts and to command them under sin. Okay, so... If it's a fixed calendar with that new world calendar, which uh, so much stuff is happening in our world right now, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they fix a day of worship or fix a calendar, and we're going to see all that in our lifetime, aren't we? But uh, he who controls the calendar controls the world. And we know the calendar that's out there right now is named after a pope, Pope Gregory. So it is true that the proposed world calendar is much simpler and easier to use in the Gregorian calendar. Uh, many sincere people have worked and are working to promote what they believe will bring only good to the world. And the world calendar bears a striking resemblance to the biblical calendar as far as the dates of worship days are concerned. Um, the world calendar each year and each quarter begins on a Sunday. In both calendars, the respective worship dates fall on the 1st, 8th, 15th, 22nd, 29th days of the month. And you'll see that on the, on the first of every quarter. You'll see it in January. All the Sundays are 1, 8, 15, 22, 29. You'll see it in April, the next quarter starting, and in July and in October. That those, all those will start on the Dates that we're familiar with, the Sabbath, new moon day is 1, the Sabbath is day 8, 15, 22, and 29. 
So if they fix their calendar, but then they're going to add two days in there, and of course, none of this matches up with the father's calendar. So Rome has already changed the calendar four times, and here's the examples. First, Rome changed the calendar in 153 BC, the first of the year from March 1st to January 1st, and in 46 BC when Julius Caesar's Caesar ordered that Rome no longer calculated the months by the moon, removing the new moon days. Later, in 321 AD, Constantine adopted the seven-day planetary week in place of the eight-day Roman Republican calendar. When adopting this pagan planetary week, he moved Saturday from the first day of the week to the seventh day, meaning that the current Saturday is the seventh day of the week only by virtue of a pagan Christian Roman Empire. Emperor. Four. Lastly, Pope Gregory. Oh, the. I don't know how to read Roman numerals. It's been too long. <laughs> Refined the Gregorian calendar in 1582, removing 10 days from the calendar count. Note, it is claimed that the order of the days did not change in 1582, which is true, but does 7 go into 10 evenly? Now, Rome is in behind a fifth change, the New World Calendar. See Daniel 7.25. And uh, here's the scripture up here, Daniel 7:25. He shall speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints of the Most High, and shall intend to, cha intend to change times and laws. So uh, Passover versus Easter uh, this year, this is 2020, if you're listening to the recording, April 12th, it's a Gregorian calendar Easter and the Father's calendar, it's always the 14th day of the first month at even is Jehovah's Passover. And that's right here, the 14th day of the first month. Sabbath is the next day when he was in the grave. And, so, and the 16th is the day he was resurrected, first fruits, wave sheep. So this is the last slide. Jehovah's sign is Passover. It is. Passover, meaning shall be, this is scripture, Exodus 13, 9 through 10. This is Passover being a sign. Passover shall be as a sign to you on your hand and as a memorial between your eyes that Yahuwah's Torah, or law of instructions, may be in your mouth. For with a strong hand, Yehovah has brought you out of Egypt. You shall therefore keep this ordinance in its season from year to year. And that's in Exodus 13. So he, that is why we have Passover. We're having Passover this coming week. Um, <clears throat> and so I hope that everyone was blessed with this study about how Rome changed the calendar, the Passover calendar, over to Easter calendar fixed on a Roman calendar. So actually, instead of shutting the recording off, I would like to hear from some of you about the world calendar or about um, uh, Rome fixing and changing Easter, um, doing away with Passover and the Feast of the Jews. I would just like to hear from a few of you because the people on the recording link would like to hear some of your voices. So go ahead. I'd like to hear some responses. Well, uh, they've already heard my voice, but I think one thing I want to add is I think it's sad that people – call the feast days Jewish days when it didn't come from the Jews, it came from God. Um, I think yeah. a lot of that comes from how uh, Christians don't study the Old Testament and see, and also the idea that, I mean, those things were done away at the cross, which there's no verse right. for that. Um, in fact, Paul in Acts celebrated these things. Um, but anyways... I just find that sad that yeah. instead of acknowledging it came from God for everyone, as stated, in fact, I think a lot of people forget that 
it was not only the Jews that was with Moses, but there were Egyptians there too, and they celebrated it. Uh, and yeah. probably others among than just the Egyptians, but people from all over the place. Um, they just people like to focus on just that it was the Jews. Thank you, Brother Stephen, and I just want everybody to know Brother Stephen's from Argentina, and many of us that are here today are from all over the states and Canada. And um, I forgot, you guys might be muted. You have to push star six to unmute. I muted everybody or unmute yourself. Uh, and uh, any more comments for to go on the recording to encourage brothers and sisters or a comment uh, you'd like to make about the calendar? Well, hello, Barbara. This is Michael. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. I'm so happy you joined us. Yeah, I didn't come in until about maybe 10, 15 minutes ago, but I enjoyed the, the tail end of what you just presented. It's wonderful information. Uh, the, the, the two cents that I want to add to the conversation is the fact that prior to the events that you mentioned, in terms of the changes that were made, <clears throat> or maybe you did mention this earlier and I just wasn't he didn't hear it, was the fact that uh, Hillel II actually fixed a uh, a Saturn Day Sabbath because of persecution by uh, the Roman emperors. And this this is actually was actually the the first main departure from uh, the uh, the Hebrews observing the calendar according to how it was originally ordained in Scripture. And from that point, the other changes that that you mentioned were made. So what we're looking at is something that the devil has actually orchestrated to massively confuse the people. He's, he's raised up different different Roman Catholic organizations. He's raised up different uh, Jewish organizations. He's raised up different things. And now, this current pope is trying to bring everything together, this ecumenical movement. And that's why this new world calendar is a very, it's very possible. I think you made a good observation based on what's happening now. This world, new world calendar that has been pushed for quite a few years, I think back in the, back in the 40s or even before then, people were suggesting yeah. it. I think even Jimmy Carter, when he was president, was trying to push for it, if I remember correctly. But yeah. this, this is something that uh, we have to take seriously because it's going to affect all of us who are clinging to the truth of the fact that um, our Father in Heaven has given us a divinely ordained calendar on which the feasts fall. And the true unity is not going to be a part of the ecumenical movement. The true unity is when, when the Ruach HaKodesh, the spirit of the living Father, uh, enables us to come into one accord regarding uh, his true calendar. And that's, that's all I'm going to say. Okay, thanks, Brother Michael. And we're going to have a Passover Seder. You'll hear Brother Michael's voice, and uh, some of us that are gathered together, we're gathered together. We're going to be in having a recording of how we did the Passover, but we'll all be in unity on the Internet and listening and partaking of the Passover April 6th, and that is at 7 p.m., and that is the 14th day of Jehovah's calendar. So uh, thank you, Brother Michael. And uh, anybody else have a comment? Thank you for bringing that up about Hillel, too. He was forced into it because of the Gregorian fixed calendar or the Constantine fixed calendar. He was forced to uh, make the dates as far ahead as he could for the Jews to follow for their feast. Anybody? And then Michael is from Florida. I just want people to know, and they're listening to the recording, people are here from North Carolina, Florida, California, uh, Michigan. Uh, we have Texas. We have uh, just Arkansas, Missouri. But go ahead, anybody else? Connecticut. Washington, Idaho. <laughs> Okay, well, then I'm going to close the recording, but everybody, please stay by. Wait, I think I hear somebody. Go ahead. Connecticut. 
Okay. All right. I'm going to close the recording, but we will have conversation and uh, questions or objections uh, as soon as I close the recording for everybody that's here. So, um, Shabbat Shalom.